I feel most people either find ants gross or even fear them, while others don't even notice them. And some even hate them, especially fire ants. But let me tell you, as an ant keeper of many years now, every single day I am reminded of how epic and mind-blowing ants really are, and most especially, fire ants. So today I wanted to take you on a journey for a more intimate and deeper look into my tiny city of fire ants, whom you guys have voted to be called the Fire Nation, and show you just how miraculous ant life truly is by using fire ants, perhaps the most hated ants of all, as our subjects. We'll even get to meet the most important member of the ant colony, who has been there since the genesis of this now massive ant colony, the Queen. You won't want to miss this incredible ant tour, so keep on watching until the end. AC family, let's gather around my ant room for another epic session of ant watching and see what the world doesn't know about the secret lives of these creatures called fire ants, why they are hated globally, and what it is truly like to live as an ant within the colony, along with our Royal Highness. In this info-packed episode of the Ant Canada Ant Channel. Get ready to be mind blown. Who needs nature shows? Just watch this channel. Enjoy. People ask me why I am so crazy about ants. After all, they're pests, especially these fire ants, which most of the world loathes. Well, I see things a little differently. First of all, not all ants are household pests. But for this video, let's focus in on fire ants. I get why people hate them. They appear in huge numbers, eat our food, leave us with painful stings, cause short circuits in our equipment, and during floods, they even survive by forming massive rafts to float on water. Not even water can kill fire ants. These fire ants that you see here, like most fire ants, are a very invasive species, and many countries, including the US, and quite recently countries like Japan, have put such fire ants on their biohazard list of pest species to quarantine. The Fire Nation here is a species known in the scientific world as Solenopsis geminata. And let me tell you, it is super famous. Or should I say, infamous. Because it has successfully invaded pretty much all of the world's tropical and subtropical countries. It's hard to find a tropical place in the world that hasn't been conquered by these ladies. In the USA, these girls, as well as the more prolific species, their cousins, Solenopsis invicta, have invaded and become the source of many problems in human populated areas. Now when I say invaded, it means these ants somehow were introduced to a given area and spread like wildfire, no pun intended, colonizing and establishing themselves in that place. Now the reason why this process of invading can be a bad thing for an area is because like most animal and plant invaders, what happens is the invading species becomes a competitor to native species and can displace them, destroy them, and or even overconsume resources like food. Essentially, when you have an invasive species of any animal or plant move into a new area, it affects the entire ecosystem of that area. In the case of Philippines, where I live, where the queen of this colony was collected, these fire ants invaded many years ago and today mostly occupy cities and luckily have not wiped out the native ants, which now generally tend to stay outside of the cities. At least for now. Locals here are used to seeing fire ants in homes and know to stay clear of them because they sting. But in places like the US, fire ants have become a major agricultural pest, killing native ants and contributing to the destruction of important crops due to their tendency to tend plant-destroying aphids as a food source, aside from their nuisance as stinging house pests. But what makes fire ants such destructive forces of nature throughout the world? To better understand fire ants, you have to look at where they came from. The dangerous fire ant species the world hates originated in South America. Let's go there. It's amazing to think that the jungles of South America helped create through evolution these highly adaptive, prolific, and destructive ant machines known as fire ants. The terrain there is very diverse and hostile a habitat full of predators, extreme climate, lots and lots of rain, and just full of many other ants, insects, and creatures competing for the same resources. 
In the jungles of South America, survival of the fittest certainly applies. So it's no wonder that evolution and natural selection helped give rise to the ever impactful fire ant. No wonder they produce so quickly, in such huge numbers, have the power to destroy ecosystems, deliver such painful stings, and even are capable of floating on water during floods. Their native place of origin made them that way. In fact, a lot of the world's problematic invasive species of ants originated in South America, like Argentine ants and raspberry crazy ants. But the next question is, how then did they get around and migrate to other parts of the world? Did they develop airlines too? Well, believe it or not, that's not too far from the truth. We humans flew them, sailed them, drove them, and cargoed them around the world. The export of plants from South America in the plant trade, as well as any cargo for that matter, including produce, all contributed to the worldwide spread of fire ants. They actually migrated to other parts of the world via Trojan horses and are still doing it to this day. There really is no way of stopping them. Governments now try inspection and some even spraying of all items entering a country. During a recent trip to Borneo, I was surprised to learn Malaysian government requires all planes to be sprayed with pesticide prior to landing. And they asked all of us to simply cover our noses while flight staff fumigated the entire cabin. But even then, after all the precautions, all it takes is one single pregnant queen ant hiding somewhere to start an entire massive and growing ant colony in a new place. And speaking of a single pregnant queen ant, back to my ant room. Let's meet our royal highness, shall we? Here lies the entrance of what you guys have called the Blaze Maze, a recently installed AC Hybrid Nest 2.0, our newest flagship for Macarium, available at AntCanada.com. And the Fire Nation here has made it their new layer. Opening it up, right at the heart of the blaze maze is a mass grouping of workers. And if you look closely, you will see deep inside the mass of worker ants is the queen. She is bigger. And wow, check out her completely bloated gaster, just full of eggs. The technical term for this condition of gaster bloating due to eggs is physogastrism. Now, in a previous video, we mentioned that this queen lays many eggs every few minutes. And one of you guys wrote to me asking how this was possible, seeing as if she was constantly laying eggs every couple of minutes, that would be some pretty fast egg development inside her. Well, what I failed to mention in that video was that she isn't always laying eggs. In many species of ants, the queen has egg laying seasons, periods where she will be popping eggs out like crazy, as seen here. This queen of ours is in her egg laying period, but there are also times when she is not laying eggs and is simply producing more eggs within her. It seems in our video from a few weeks ago, you guys spotted the queen dashing away from our camera. But if you look closely at her, her gaster was not as physogastric, not as large as it is now. So at that time, our queen was in her egg laying break period. She also didn't have as many ants completely clamoring all around her at that time, like we see here. For those of you who keep ants in North America, Europe, Australia, and other temperate regions, you will also notice these egg laying breaks throughout the year and throughout all of winter time. Now AC family, are you ready to be mind blown? What is truly miraculous is how these fertilized eggs are created inside the queen. And to learn about that, let's go back to two years ago when this queen was still a virgin. So at some point in our queen's life, she belonged to another nest of another mature colony somewhere in the Philippines. She was born with wings from another founding queen of her birth colony. Now during mating season prior to rainy season, she emerged from her birth nest, took off into the air along with all her fellow queen sisters, and so too did her winged brothers. So get this, in this massive one month a year event called the nuptial flight, all fire ant colonies, virgin queens and males of her species throughout all of the Philippines took to the air at the same time and engaged in a huge mating session. Can you believe it? Every year, completely by instinct, biological clock and cues from weather, the fire ants throughout the country release a specific pheromone which floats through the air to signal all fire ant reproductives to fly in this nuptial flight month a yearly ritual which has remained unchanged for millions and millions of years. And this is how it happens for almost every ant species in the world. Every species has their given nuptial flight season in the year, 
and the ants fly and mate in the same way. So our queen, after having mated with several male ants, who by the way, die after mating, dropped to the ground and broke off her wings. Can you imagine that after using her flight equipment, she no longer needs it, so it is completely discarded. Talk about body mutilation. Then she proceeded to start her own colony somewhere else. And as she was wandering around, she was captured and cared for, and eventually ended up in my ant room to start her own growing ant colony, which became what you guys now know as the Fire Nation. It's amazing to think that this massive ant colony started with just this single queen ant. And what's even more amazing? Just that one day of mating was enough to allow her to produce fertilized eggs for her entire life, which could span multiple decades. Yes, she has a special organ in her body called a spermathica, which keeps all that sperm collected during nuptial flight viable, and she releases each sperm cell to fertilize one egg inside her for years and years to come. Talk about the perfect ant manufacturing machine. It just blows my mind how amazing this queen ant is. By the way guys, now that the hybrid nest allows us to actually see her and check up on her periodically, should we give this queen a name? AC family, leave your name suggestions for our royal highness in the comment section and I will choose my favorites for the entire AC family to vote on in a future video. So once an egg is laid, one of these worker ants grabs it and proceeds to place it in an egg pile somewhere in the nest. All these eggs will be workers, except prior to nuptial flight season where some of the eggs become alates, i.e. reproductive queens and males. When the eggs hatch, the larvae are transported to a larva room, a sort of nursery where they are fed and constantly licked clean by the workers. The workers, who are all their sisters, feed the larvae via trophallaxis, a process where they essentially regurgitate stored food within their crop or social stomach food which was deposited there from either a previous meal or via trophallaxis from a fellow sister worker ant. Trophallaxis is a great way for ants to distribute food to one another so that only a few ants ever have to leave the nest to physically find and eat the food in its raw form. Everyone else just stays home and waits for the food to be delivered. Eventually these larvae grow and become pupae and are then placed into a pupae incubation chamber where they are allowed to develop into adult ants. By the way, these chambers for eggs, larvae, and pupae are always changing in location depending on ideal environmental conditions for each stage. Usually the most humid rooms are delegated for eggs and larvae, while the warmest rooms are for pupae. Some species of ants will even bring their pupae to the uppermost portions of their anthills in order to bake the pupae under the sun's heat to speed up development of the pupae into adult worker ants. The faster ants can get the young to adulthood, the better because a larger worker force means greater survival rate for the ant colony. And that AC family is the miracle of ant life. Can you see why ant lovers like myself are crazy about ants? They are just mind-blowing creatures designed to survive and proliferate efficiently in their extensive underground cities. Though most of the world might dislike ants, they still are pretty amazing creatures, essential to the environment and important for our survival. They are vital predators decomposers, pollinators, seed distributors, and prey items in ecosystems around the world. And now the next time you see an ant, you know where it came from and what it took for it to get there. Thanks for watching another episode of the Ants Canada Ant Channel. This is Ants Canada signing out. It's ant love forever. All right, AC family, aren't ants the coolest creatures? Now that you know how cool they are, I hope all of you guys get the unique opportunity to keep ants yourselves and observe them in the comfort of your own home as pets. The ant farm setup you see in this video is available at antscanada.com. I will leave a link in the description box to a complete easy to use kit called the All You Need Hybrid Nest Gear Pack for you to check out if you would like to try ant keeping. And just a note, we do ship worldwide, as well as offer starting ant colonies with a queen for sale from ant keepers who may be from your city through the GAN project, an initiative to help lessen the spread of invasive ants while helping the ant keeping community grow. So watch more about that in this video here. Promise you will find ant keeping to be super fun and educational. And for all of you parents out there, it's an awesome way to bond with your kids while learning about nature. It would be super cool to keep ants together with you guys. AC and her colony, of course, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you would just like to watch some extended play footage of the Fire Nation living in their setup. 
And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, the fact that the fire ants chose to keep mostly larvae in the new hybrid nest indicates what? Congratulations to Emerald Lion 1717, who correctly answered, the fire ants chose to keep mostly larvae in the new hybrid nest because it has more humidity. Congratulations Emerald Lion 1717, you just won a free AC test tube portal from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what is the technical term for the condition of a queen ant's gaster that is swollen with eggs? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's ant love forever.